hello, hi, welcome back to my channel everyone. Nice to see you all behind that screen. You just all look fantastic today. What I wanted to share with you in this video is the top five features that I love and hate about my 2022, that's a mouthful, right? Skoda Octavia VRS Estate. Now, hopefully this video should give you some sort of idea what to expect if you are going to buy one of these cars. I've already put 2,000 miles on this car in the last two weeks, so I genuinely think I know what's good and what's not already. We're only gonna cover the top five things I love and hate. So yeah, let's get on with it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, do a triple backflip, and then share this with all your friends, family, and lovers, ex-lovers, partners, well, I don't know. Okay, so one of the things I love about this car is the fact that it is keyless entry. Let's lock it. Now, if my keys are in my pocket, I can walk up to this, put my hand there, and it's unlocked. I don't need to get my keys out, I don't need to press the fob, I don't need to do anything like that, and away I go. Next thing I like about this, or should I say love, by the way, we're starting with all the love things first and I'll tell you why people love negativity on YouTube and if we wait till the end of the video then you'll see all the negatives so it just keeps you watching longer so we go in the car my keys are still in my pocket and instead of having to put my key in the ignition and turn it I can just press this lovely button here and it starts Let's turn it off another feature I love about this I keep saying love is this button here opens the boot like that and then to close you just press that now the other feature I love about this car is the fact it's got all the Apple CarPlay you don't even need to connect your cable into the phone it will literally just sync with your phone straight away you'll be able to do all your maps all your addresses all your contacts everything like that straight from the screen so as you can see here you've pretty much got your whole iphone display on the vehicle itself you can phone people you can do everything and also you can do it all from the touch of the button so this car has got a lot of good features about it but there's one thing which i absolutely love about this vehicle which i haven't even shared yet and i can honestly say i don't think anyone would guess it right this shocked me. I thought only Bentleys and Rolls Royce had this. <laughs> Days like this, look what we have. A bloody Skoda umbrella. It's even got a button on it to eject. So, that is the top feature of this car. Skoda have up their game, mate. I'm telling you, these Skodas are now competing with the likes of Rolls Royce. How many vehicles do you know that you get an umbrella in with an eject button. <laughs> oh, that is good quality as well. Right, <laughs> let's chuck that back in. And we'll go over the things we dislike about it. It's even got its own little cover, look. Its own little sleeve. Don't see that again. The first thing I noticed when I got in this car, which really stressed me out after buying it, right, you ain't believe it, it's not got a cigarette lighter. Now, I don't smoke, I'm not a smoker, I don't need it for the cigarette lighter, but I like to plug USB sockets to charge various items of mine, like cameras, like anything when I'm driving. However, this car does not have a bloody cigarette lighter. What on earth? All we've got is USB-C ports. I mean. How good are these really? So all we've got is two USB-C ports here, not even the normal USB slots or ports that you would need, and two in the back. Um, whether or not they're trying to future-proof this car, I don't know, but I've never used one of these in my life until I got the new iPhone, which I still didn't actually need this for. I only, because this lead comes with the, I'm gonna just stop it there. It should have a cigarette lighter, right? And it should have, a USB port, a normal one. <laughs> oh, another thing I can't stand is the fact we've got a park button and we've got the handbrake or parking brake here. Surely, right, let's not confuse things too much, Skoda. Surely we would have a P on here where you just put this into P like a normal person would, like a normal automatic. So sometimes I'll find myself thinking, oh, let's press P for park, but then I don't put the handbrake on, so the car will still rock or vice versa i'll put it in park 
park brake and then you press P, this one, and then it will cut out. But I, I, why? Just Can't they just non-confuse this? Or am I being stupid? But I just don't know why they didn't do away with that and just put a P here. So if I put it in park, not, yeah. Another feature which drives me mad is when I'm driving along the road and it's got this lane assist and you can just be cruising along minding your own business and all of a sudden the steering wheel will just tug to the left it will literally make you stay in your lane right but it's not always correct the person behind me may well think i've had about five or six pints because the car will just swerve i'm like i no like literally keep you'll be going along and it will it will just you'll feel it you think hang on a minute it's a bit of a wrestle going on there why are you turning i don't want you to turn so in the end what you have to do is turn it off and the easiest way to turn it off on this car you have to turn it off every single time by the way you can't just turn it off once and that's it forever you press this little button that comes up with lane assist let's just press this one untick it and it's off so Lane assist, no good. For me, personally, I don't like it. I want to be in control of the car. I don't want the car being in control of me. <laughs> now, there's two more things which I cannot stand about this car, and I think we'll start with the second to worst one, and that is the climate control. Now, they should have put more buttons in here. Why couldn't they just put traditional air conditioning knobs and controls? Instead, we've got this, look, we press climber. Right. We've got smart AC, so we can defog the windows, warm my feet, warm my hands, cool my feet, give myself some fresh air, lovely, love that, that's a real good feature. If we click classic AC, this is how we're getting into the air conditioning. So if I'm driving along the road and suddenly I need some air con, I'm having to, look, I'm having to go bang, then I'm at, it will normally be at, at, on smart AC, then I have to press classic AC, then we've got an auto button here, you press auto, Look, it's gone mental, right? Okay, cool. Let's put it on low. Then we can toggle it down. But look, I don't want to be doing all this stuff when I'm driving. You can select it to go on your windscreen. You can select it to go towards you or down below, whatever. But you can press that knob, yeah. But when you're driving along, you shouldn't really be having to faff around with this. Like, it's easier just to, like when I used to have, I used to have a Mercedes C350, you could literally not, you don't need to look, you just do it. But this thing, no, not having it mate, hate that. Put a bloody button in next time Skoda, a proper with controls, not none of this. I don't want all this screen stuff when I'm trying to use my aircon. And then to turn it off, you do that. And then this is another thing, you end up pressing, I keep thinking this is turning it down, like as in turning the power down, but it's not, it's making it the temp. Oh. Anyway, basically, AC on this, no, no, no fun, not on a screen, not for me, thank you. I sound like I'm proper ranting, don't I? Now, th this last one is one thing, it really rattles me to no end. When I say rattles, it literally rattles me. You'll be driving along, and it, okay, I can blame it on this car, but I could blame it on probably every new car now. Automatic stop start, what the f is that? What is it? Like you'll be coming up to a junction, for example, right? People would just be walking along the pavement, all happy as Larry. You're slowing down, you know, looking right, looking left, whatever, yeah? And then you're about to pull out, boom, the engine's cut out, it's cut out. It's, it cuts out sometimes before you even get to the end of the road. You haven't even hit, the, you haven't even stopped yet and the thing cuts out, it will cut out and then people look at you as if you've stalled your car or something because obviously they hear the engine turn off and then you go to pull back out and then the engine's starting back up and there's a little bit of a power loss because it's just started automatic stop start yeah is one thing i cannot stand and the only way you can turn it off on this is you press the set button you can go through this menu up here and then you press that right so now it's deactivated but it won't remember my preferences so the next time i jump in and out of the car it's going to come back on again look watch Right, goodbye Darren. Okay, no, I've changed my mind. I've come back. Look, the bloody thing is back on. Stop, automatic stop start is back on. I hate it. I bloody hate it. And then to confuse things, I thought, oh, hang on a minute. This A here must be to turn it on and off. So every time I jump in, I can just press that. Look, if you press this button, that's auto hold. 
I don't need auto hold. Like, surely, I think this car does that anyway. Like, that should be an automatic stop start button. I should have designed this car for you, Skoda. <laughs> but yeah, automatic stop start is the worst invention ever. I don't care what people say. If they go, oh, it's saving the environment. It's not, because every time your car turns back on, you're wasting the bloody starter motor, your battery. I know they're all designed for these p pointless things, but you just keep, I just think, let, let the engine run for a bit. Fair enough if you're like at a roadworks or something like that, but you know, or you're at a railway crossing, but not when you're just everyday driving. I even had it once yet, yeah, I was going along the road, about to turn right, waiting for the cars to pass so I could turn right. Car, <laughs> the car went past, I was like, okay, I'm going. Oh, it's cut out and it started again. That's my rant over. So there's a good example, right? Five things I do love about this car and five things I can't stand. I think my feelings towards the things I can't stand are a lot stronger than the ones I love. <laughs> love or hate, I don't know. But yeah, um, I hope this video has given you some sort of idea about the Skoda Octavia, the latest one. I'm not sure what it was like in the Mark III, but in the Mark IV, there's certainly things on there which are good and certainly things that are bad. But if we can, Skoda, if you're watching this, in the next model or version, put a few air conditioning knobs in, get a button for the auto stop start, or maybe program it so your preferences are remembered. Maybe this is all to do with the EU Euro 6 stuff. I don't know. It's not, all I want to do is drive. And because I'm in and out of my car a lot all day long, I'm sort of like, well, yeah, pressing all these buttons. <laughs> but. Um, that's going to be it for today. I do love the umbrella in here, by the way. That's like one feature I think is the best because days like this, look, when you've got a little bit, tiny bit of rain, you've got an excuse to get out your door and show off. <laughs> but no, that's, I'm only joking. I'm not that sort of person. Uh, don't think I'd need it. I ain't got any air. But yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. New to my channel, please subscribe. Hit that video bell button, thumbs up, all of that stuff. And I will see you all again soon for the next one. Bye for now.